aloha, everybody. Welcome back. MJ, Mark Grayson, Luke to Barbering, Greg So, Michael Todd, Greg Todd, and Brian Gio in just a second. Uh, first, I just want to say on behalf of both of us, thank you for the for those that have subscribed to our channel already. That's pretty exciting. And for following us on Instagram. Uh, today's topic, we'll be talking about staying in your own lane as a, as a new barber, as an apprentice, as an aspiring barber. Staying in your own lane and staying sort of true to the path that you to to the path that you want to be as a barber, to who you want to be as a barber, and to the career that you envision for yourself as a barber. So, let me welcome on my my uh, the 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 Batman to my Robin. What's up, Batman? <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> yo 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 yo. Yeah, man. It's a good topic today, right? Yeah. 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 Well, let's uh, let's start with you. Man. What what does staying in your own lane mean to you? Well, uh, for me, important stay in because I built my shop around a certain certain place here in the neighborhood. Focus itself instead of world. <laughs> you know, um, why did I do that? Because there's a lot of barber shops, man. And I want to have my own identity for my own shop with the guys. So I had to figure out, you know, what is my niche where I wanted success, right? And uh, I wanted to help the neighborhood with nice people instead of what they talk about negative. So, um, yeah, I kind of... I that niche and uh, that's become successful I think for uh, for new newbies and newcomers to the craft and it very important stick to you instead of yeah. somebody at somebody well you know like your and I guess it's safe to say, similar to myself, that, you know, you are the product of your, you know, 20-something years or so in, 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 in the hair business. But, you know, I think that, and you're not even close to being at the end of your career, but this, the way you are now is definitely a fruition uh, of what you, you saw for yourself, right? You started and you, you kind of stayed on track to who you were what you wanted to do um, and you've developed that from a sort of a, like, you know, like we've talked about off camera, like a foundation, right? Like you started here, you knew what you wanted. So you pretty much stayed focused on, I'm going to, this, I'm going to be geo. This is what geo is going to be about. This is what geo is going to do. And what you do now is as evidenced by your, you know, the shop in the background, your social media and your career highlights is that you, you didn't deviate from that, you know, and, I'm pretty much the same, you know, like, you know, I'm byproduct of that same sort of focus, you know, put the blinders on and just go, this is what I want to do, this is what MJ is going to do, and I'm not going to let anybody sort of take me off of that path, right? Yeah, man, and it's important to have that, right, you know, because you work on your foundation. Foundation is so important. People for, tend to forget that, right? It's not where you want to be. No, it's starting way where you where he was in the past, you know. I always drop back to my basics. If I have a, a shitty day or anything, I need to get in my comfort zone that my basic stuff that I've learned as a foundation is still functioning. <laughs> you know? yeah. I cannot I cannot function and, and rely on all my techniques that I learned and all special things that I do. Oh no, man, sometimes you just got to switch the button and just rely on your basics. So my important advice to people to start right now is build a good foundation. Especially take your job with pride. Be proud of what you do. It doesn't matter, you know, if you're an apprentice or whatever, you know, that has 20, 50. Oh no, man, they'll fall down on that foundation basics. And if you start with an apprenticeship, probably you're not going to cut for the first half till here. That was my apprenticeship. 
I had a long apprenticeship. I trained a lot, but before I really got to the job, it took me one and a half, one year. I trained a lot, but like like we said, it it said takes a ten thousand hours. I don't know if you you know how much ten thousand hours are. A lot of hours, man. It's a lot of hours, man. Before you learn some haircutting, nowadays with social media, it looks like. But here's the thing, when you start, it goes always like this. It, it always is a staggering. But the point that it, it's going to dip, and the dip will be really hardcore sometimes, you know, and to get out of it. But if you have a good foundation, it's easier, you know, to get out of that, that dip. Yeah. And I think that's only because you have a good foundation, a good base. And with apprenticeship, you know, a lot of people, they, they, they start doing apprenticeship and they think like, why the hell do I only have to clean and uh, preparate everything? This and that. Well, for me, my shop and, and what I tell to people, the apprenticeship, you know, apprentice girl or boy, it doesn't matter what it is. It's the most important guy or girl in the shop. They keep the shop on rolling. They greet the people in, they get coffee, hang up the jacket, they communicate with us. And the only thing the barbers do that are already licensed is cut hair and give a little bit of entertainment. Comes. But the apprentice, they do a lot, man. And um, of course, it's a learning process. But do the cleaning and the sweeping right. You know when you get ready for license or anything shop is clean cherished clean you know the thing is online you see that it's back as well so i'll have my things in a certain pattern or a certain way that comfortable customers always see like hey man pretty neat i think that's uh that's that's foundation as well. sometimes i'm a bit lazy you know after work you know when i nine o'clock to clean up my mirror and but then I could come earlier the morning after and do it then before I start my day. Yeah. But that's the advantage of an owner, you know. <laughs> you know? Well, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> but you know, you pay your dues, right? And a lot of this a lot of the staying in your own lane is like if you come in very new to the trade as an apprentice, you're very impressionable. You've already had the impressions and you've and you've seen things that have influenced you to want to become a barber. So now you made that choice for yourself, and now you found your shop of choice that you want to work at. But it's intimidating to be in a shop as the apprentice, and all you feel that you're capable or equipped to do is clean and set up. And, you know, if you're not taking pride in that basic stuff, and you just think, okay, I'll just knock this out so I can get to the real good stuff, and, and, you, and you skip the foundation part of it, Right, and you start looking around the room and you see all the experienced barbers, you know, you might start getting like, well, I gotta be like, I'm not gonna worry about the cleaning and the towels, but I'm gonna like, I'm gonna aspire to be like that dude. I wanna be like that guy in chair number five, or, but then I'm gonna take some of this dude in chair number two, and then the girl in chair number three. And, and you start like getting lost in like your expectations for yourself without focusing on first, like, let me make sure this counter is top is clean. Right? Let me make sure the garbage cans are lined. Let me make sure the lather is mixed and hot and ready to go. Make sure the towels are in the machine and ready for when the shave comes in, right? So, you know, you talked about, you know, Rome not being built over overnight. <clears throat> and I had mentioned an analogy off camera about, like, the seven wonders of the world and, you know, from the pyramids to, you know, the Great Wall of China. And I don't remember what all seven were, but, like, none of these seven wonders were built on uh, rocky foundations for them to last centuries and decades as long as they have, right? Like somebody back then in, 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 in Egypt said, like, we're going to build these pyramids, y'all, so it's going to start like this, it's going to look like this at the end. They didn't say, well, like, what about, like, halfway, we put, like, a couple pillars, <laughs> and then we put, like, <laughs> we put, like, a balcony, <laughs> and then, like, we put this dope roof, and <laughs> You know, they were changing things on the fly. They say like, no, this is how it's going to be. It's going to start like this. It's going to end like this. Yeah. So we have to sort of take some of that foundation perspective as we start this journey. Right? 
and then it's all about teamwork you know i know i remember back in the day you know like i work with uh, uh i worked in uh in hair salon right trendy hair salon but what we did is the apprentices and the, the students that work for us colored yeah i always give my tip money to them and everybody says like why the hell are you giving your tip money to them it's your tip money i said you know man they worked for me you know and those, those are little appreciations that, that, that the apprentices also really love, yeah. you know, because they work for us, man. I don't, I don't care about my tip money. I always put it in a jar, you know, and somebody wants some food or some drinks, get it. But for my employers, you know, they can have their own. But for me, if somebody does something to me, I want generally... gratitude work that they do right and it's not like that uh, apprentices are slaves from the shop or anything because that, that's a misleading thing because a lot of I, I i saw it in my uh of apprentices treated like slaves it's not like that but um i think like i said it's it's, it's the most important guy or girl you know that's in the shop Treat them well, you know. You got a good apprentice. You 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 got to lift them up somehow, you know? with a good thought or a shoulder, a tap on the shoulder or whatever. But you got to mo you got to motivate them. Want to work for you? It's the same thing with your. You got to motivate them guys and girls, you know, to work for you. It's 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 a team effort. It's, it's not like hey, I'm on top of the power, you know, and the rest is just gonna. Listen to me. Sometimes you know when you have too much personal content, it's also not. But for me, my shop is my home, right? Shop is a home to everybody that comes in the shop and leaves the shop. And also works in the shop. I, I I intend to be pretty personal with people. I don't share my secrets or stuff, but I really want them to feel comfortable in my shop. It's everybody's home, right? So they come to my home, I come to your home. I want to be treated as people that live there. Yeah, so that I think you touched on a subject or that story or uh, those values. <clears throat> I mean, I, I believe that those go back to what we believe traditional barbering was all about in a time where there wasn't so much influence to distract us and to, uh, <clears throat> to take us out of the lane that we start on. I mean, the barbers back in the day from, you know, I always talk about my mentor, Barber Dan. He's been at it for 50 years. Like, Barber Dan didn't have no social media. They didn't have no cell phones. They didn't, they didn't have nothing but the neighborhood they worked in and lived in uh, or the barber schools that they started at or the barber shops they would apprentice at and learn that way, right? <clears throat> and now we have people getting into barbering that have, you know, before they even start, they already have a social media following of sorts, right? Because they've been cutting in their garage or so, you know, they may start their apprentice and they already have a big following or, you know, like they, they, they've got that or the one that doesn't feels that he has to or she has to now get a big following so early, right? So it takes them out of the focus of let me get my basics down first, right? It's now the basics now today in today's world of barbering isn't. Let me learn how to clean from top to bottom without complaining and making sure the shop is operational. Now it's, let me get these haircuts so blurry and so flawless so I can get more followers so I can then become a little bit more, you know, popular in world social media. And so, you know, we talk about staying in our own lane and, and I, you know, in my, in my experience over the last 10 years or 12 years, <clears throat> excuse me, I just wanted to be like the race horses, man, or the race dogs, you know, just put these things on me. So that all I can see is when I come out of the gate is forward, right? Yeah, I don't see the next to me or behind me. I just, I'm just trying to get to the finish line. So to me, that meant in the early days, unfollowing a lot of barbers that I used to get intimidated by seeing their haircuts, you know, and I was naive that I didn't even know people were Photoshopping haircuts, right? So I get so caught up in you know, that person, right? I would get caught up in that I have to have so many barbershops. I would get caught up in that I have to do these kind of haircuts only or better at these kind of haircuts, right? When 
my whole focus this whole time has been like, just give good service. You know, focus on the service. Focus on your relationship building. So even I was uh, had to go through some of that experience as an experienced barber and shop owner to say like. I got locked off my course and I have to get back on track. And once I was able to do that, again, I was able to blossom more because I wasn't focused on what everybody else was doing, you know. Uh, and I think that's vital and it's key for people that are starting out new to the trade. I think um, there's a lot of uh, negative in And I mean, like, sure. not negative, negative. Good, but that's yeah. too much. So, so, so you lose your focus on on what's important, right? And the most important thing is that you develop good habits you to start. So that means you have to be hygienical. You have to be on time. You have to do certain things that you think like, what the hell? Man, everybody saw Karate Kid, right? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, like, Mr. Miyagi was kind of like an asshole, you know? If, if you see what, what the dude had to do, you know? Wash him, wash off. Go go wash your own cars, man, you know? That's what you I know, my dude said. My dude said, varnish this whole fence. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you crazy, man? Don't be stupid. I just want to fight, man, you know? But that's the essence. You have to learn to... And then... And I think if you treat that as a Mr. Miyagi that 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 developed that skill, you know, eventually, uh, oh, the crane. Yeah, yeah, dude, all that stuff. All of a sudden, he says, "Yeah, pick the fence." He's like, "Oh, oh, blocking," you know. <laughs> and it's the muscle memory, right? It's, exactly. it's doing things so often and so well. Uh, I think we talked about it before another episode. Maybe we did it, but I think John Wooden, the the famous coach from the UCLA basketball, was saying like. Practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect, right? So if you do great from the beginning and take pride in every little thing, there's no way you won't succeed as a barber. And there's no way you won't succeed as a shop owner one day because you are focused on doing things right. And one day things just like you have this aha moment with like, oh, this makes sense. I okay, can't, it, it all makes sense. It all, it all connects now, right? And, and barbering becomes so much easier and shop ownership becomes so much easier, and just being a good human being and good a good relationship builder becomes so much easier because it all just makes sense one day because you've just been doing it, and doing it, and doing it. Learn that that basic thing and live for eternity, man. You know. Now, if you start, you have nothing to prove. You're just a, like a sponge that hasn't sucked in. A lot of things, yeah. but if you suck it in the negative things, it also becomes something negative. Just see things as positivity and try to build something. What's a good basic where you can rely on when the days are bad? You can rely on foundation, and there's nothing to play no more because you can't keep it rolling. I've been I've been cutting in the nights, in the mornings, and in times where I think people. Like, well, dude, can't you even cut, you know, <laughs> in that state of mind. I'm not like, you know, I've been doing it so long right now. It's 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 automatic pilot, right? And sometimes you have, I, I can tell you like this. You got more worse days than better days. And everybody like, huh? What you mean by that? Look at your life. How much good days you have and how much bad they have. There's always negative influence the weather is shitty. Uh, your pants are too short. Your pants are this and that. And that negativity, you always you bring it along with you. Yeah. But I always say to people when they start and even even fans people, like, hey man, everybody knows what their A skill is. And A skill, you know everything is perfect. You're cleaning, you're cutting, you're blow drying, whatever. But we're going to be B game, you know. A game, you know, work on your B game. Because if that B game levels up with the A game like this, you know when you fall down into a dip or a day is, you got an off day, you can always rely on that B game. And if that B game is there and it's good enough, it doesn't matter, you know. And who you to prove it? 
I don't need to prove myself on Instagram. I need to prove my customers that I'm consistent every time they come. Every time. Say that again. Say that again for the people in the back that didn't that came late and didn't hear you. Say that one more time. <laughs> Say that one more time, man. So for me, it's kind of like you know, you got your A game and you. The A game is perfect, right? Everybody knows what. Everybody that. But you gotta work. B game, because if your B game is a little bit more level with A game, you can rely on your B game. Because it doesn't matter, you know, what's going to happen if you got a bad day or something. And if you have that, then you you practically done, you know. Because if you rely on that B game, it's, 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 it's easy then, right, you know. Everybody goes out of the shop because you're consistent, you know. Everybody wants to work on that A game. Oh, man, work on that B game, man. Keep that in mind. Because yeah, man. B game is there, you can function every time. Well, I'm, I'm trying to apply. I'm, not, I'm trying to apply that in all aspects of my life: <laughs> barbering, dating. I got no A game, B game, <laughs> no game. <laughs> but the fine line sometimes in barbering between a B game and your A game is it's so small. It could be like you're just having a better day uh, emotionally and mentally and, and spiritually that. You're just vibing, man, right? You're flowing. And things just make sense. Then muscle memory's already kicked in. Like, there have been days where I did a, I finished a haircut on somebody that I've been cutting the hair for 10 years. And I'll look at it, and I'm like, damn, that's, boom, I did that, you know? Yeah. So, and I'll show him the mirror, but he don't want to look at the mirror. He's like, oh, I trust you. I'm like, but dude, look, I got better, man. Look, what I got, what is that? <laughs> you know? But he can't see the difference, right? Oh, exactly. But, you know? So, you know, a lot of that is like getting caught up in like and staying in your own lane, going back to that 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 philosophy of, you know, once you get caught up in trying to be like the other barbers you see and the quality of the work they do on Instagram and the photos and the people in your own shop, you lose your own identity that makes you a barber. You know, your 70 percent personality that we talked about in the previous episode, you know, um, you end up trying to be somebody that you're not authentically and, you know. Customers and clients can sense that kind of stuff. They can sense, because they'll see that I've, there were times when I got so caught up in thinking that I had to do the haircut a different way until I developed my own sort of system of cutting hair that I was trying different things, trying different things. And then, you know, when you get off of that, that muscle memory to do something different and you, and you hit a spot while you're cutting hair where you're like, oh, shoot, like, how do I get out of this? Like, a client's going to sense your insecurity and a client's going to sense your... Uh, that you're stuck. He's going to say, man, you over here a whole lot, man. Like, what's going on back here? <laughs> you haven't, you've been over here for like five minutes, man. What's going on? <laughs> so, like, a lot of it is just like, you know, you find your purpose, you find your lane, you find a way to do things your way. And you can be influenced from other artists and other barbers to say, like, I'll take some of that and I'll take some of this, right? That's what this whole uh, project is about. You know, we're just giving people what we know, what's worked for us, and they can take you know, throw some out, take some in. But as long as you stay true to your integrity, who you want to be as a barber, and and you don't uh, sell out, you don't sell out your uh, your purpose, you don't sell out doing things the right way for the benefit of the customer, right? You don't sell out to be ego-driven versus relationship-building driven, right? Um, then I think, yeah, your, your career as a barber and potentially a shop owner one day and starting off as a apprentice will be as fruitful as you want to make it. Yeah, and and you got to bear in mind like this isn't about competition we talked about offline like experiences in barber battles i know i didn't do barber battles even the, not uh, here's the thing right you know it's good for your own ego you no know, if they yeah. if you if they have a price for you it's paid for this and that and that but that's just, that is just for you. It doesn't yeah. mean, you know, when you are the best barber, you know, you're also the best service man in your shop. Yeah. You know? And you got to recognize that. Because shop and doing a battle is two different things. And I think, like, the trade doesn't need any competition. Here's a, here's a quick example. It's, it's like... Um, 
My town, Rotterdam, has 900,000 people living over here. I cannot cut them all, right? It's impossible, man. I should have had 300 shops then, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, you have to find your own niche. You know? And it's a very yeah. own specific way your customer. Select your own. Yeah, there's plenty. And there's so many people out there that there's, it's impossible for one barber to get to all of them, right? So why compete? Because there's so many people, the chances are that you'll attract the kind of customers that you want. They'll come to you because they do like your style. They do like your ambiance and experience that you give. They'll read the reviews and think that you're a certain kind of barber, which they'll appreciate versus maybe somewhere else they went before. So, you know, I understand the concept of the barber battles was to try to create unity within the barbering community and bring people together. Uh, and use the competition as the as the carrot to dangle to bring people in. The, the concept I didn't like was that it promotes competition, right, within within that community. So you know your your uh, and it's all based on the quality of a haircut or how fast you can cut hair. Or uh, it's not based on <clears throat> the merit isn't judged on like how well you greet a client when they come in like hand out some have, have a battle for that man like you know <laughs> best, how, how, best greeting. How, who does the best handshake to your who's the best hug man you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. uh who puts the drape on the nicest i don't know but like the service stuff that's you know um because if i had if i went to a battle and again staying focused like i didn't want to associate myself to going to battles because that's not my scene. That's not what I'm about. That's not the branding. Uh, the branding that I try to build up is service and relationships and the customer. It's not about like, but check me out at this barber battle, you know, and maybe somebody might see me and maybe, you know, that I can go take a picture with somebody. Like that's not, that wasn't what I was trying to be about, right? And and that's not to say that that there's anything wrong for the community that want to do barber battles. That, hey, that's all for them, man, but it just wasn't for me. And so I've been very careful in selecting like, what things I do go to, what what appearances are, or not appearances, but like if there's an event, will I go to it? Will it affect my branding? Will it will it will it affect like how people perceive my image as a barber? Would my customers appreciate that I went to this or didn't go to this? Like if a company in the past has asked me to work for them, is it going to be good? Are they aligned with my values and and not just as a barber but as a human being as well? Right, so. Um, that all came down to staying in my lane and making those conscious choices to not sell myself out for uh, for money or opportunity because not all opportunities are good. Right? So. And here's the thing, right? Especially, what is there to prove? If your books are full, yeah. there's nothing to prove. You know, you're doing yeah. a great job. You know, and if you can provide for your family, for your wife, for your kids, for the animals <laughs> that you got, that's good, yeah, man. Yeah. And it, all that matters. Man. That's all that barbering comes down to. Without that, if you don't have that, if you could have a million followers, right? And people on on Instagram think that you're an amazing barber. You live this amazing life. But if you've got a zero clientele, right, and you and your books are always empty, and you're not even making you're not even making rent. You're not paying your bills. It's 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 um, it's pretend. It's make believe, man. And barbering is not make believe. It's not pretend. The goal, the goal of it is to gain one customer, right? If you have one customer that comes twelve months and they pay you twenty dollars a haircut, I don't know what twenty times twelve is because I suck at math. But if you do the math on that, every every month for twelve. For 12 months times 10 years or however long they sit with you multiply that by you know 500 customers you got a good living right there right you don't need all 600,000 rotterdam residents to come in into your shop exactly. you know? and so that's the that's the thing you to that's quick to lose sight of is you know you want to have and nothing wrong with wanting to have your name on the window of your barbershop nothing wrong with wanting to see a social media following that adores you that's okay, but if you don't know how to sweep hair, if you don't know how to change your, your disinfectant, your quats, you don't know what the measurements are in the solution, you don't know how to mix the lather, uh, you don't know how to uh, disinfect your, your tools, you don't know how to uh, clean a shop where there's no hair on the floor, you don't know how to sweep hair for other barbers while they're working and you're slow, 
it won't matter how many followers you've got. It won't. It won't matter what opportunities knock on your door. Man. You, you at some point, you, because you want to cheat the system and you want to cut corners, it's gonna all fall, man. You know, just like that pyramid. The dude that said, "Let's make the pyramid, but halfway, let's put the pillars. Let's put like a deck, <laughs> like a pool. That's something gonna, break, man. That's oh, something gonna last for centuries, man." <laughs> Oh, man. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you had some good advices from us. You know. Follow yeah. us on Instagram, Roots of Barbering. Yeah, follow us. And, uh, and forget whatever I said, man. We want a million followers. So. <laughs> <laughs> forget everything I said, man. We want a million followers. So. <laughs> hey, we love you guys. Thanks for those that have followed us. Thanks that appreciate whatever these two old guys throw out, man. We love you all, man. I love you and appreciate you, brother. Man.